Welcome, yogis. This little video will name Happy Hips. It's a series of hip openers, so it's mostly stretching and exploring and seeing what feels good. I'm going to use a timer, a stopwatch, so that we stay even on both sides. If you'd like a blanket to support the back of your head, go ahead and put one there. You will need a strap for this practice. So let's begin on your backs. And bring both knees into your chest. Bring your hands onto your kneecaps with your fingers pointing towards your toes. Taking some, some circles, letting your arms do the work and your legs be passive. So moving the legs around in a circle, bringing them in close, separating the knees, press the legs away, bring them back together and draw them in. Taking a few slow circles, so that you can determine if there's any compression or pain in the hip sockets. We're gonna switch direction. So moving slowly so that you can determine what your pain-free range of motion is. And if you're experiencing some pain, take your circles smaller. So explore what works so that you are in fact pain-free. Happy baby pose, holding on to the outer edges of the feet would be deepest, holding on behind the knees would be um, less challenging. So pick what works for you, trying to bring your feet as though you're standing on the ceiling. You could hold your ankles, bring your knees in, your, your elbows inside your knees, and a little bit of motion side to side. You're holding on to your feet, you hold the outer edge of the foot with the elbows inside the knees, and again, bringing your feet as though you're standing on the ceiling. Now for an inner leg stretch, inner thigh stretch, take your hands to your inner knees, take the legs wide. You can straighten the legs if you like, or leave the knees a little bent. And again, a little motion side to side. Now with knees bent, feet on the floor, take just the right leg in to a half happy baby pose, holding on behind the knee, the ankle, or the outer foot. You can experiment here and see what feels better with your left foot on the floor, knee bent, or the left leg long on the floor. And again, playing with the idea of range of motion and pain-free range of motion. So try out the different possibilities. And now take your strap and put it around the ball of the right foot. <clears throat> Holding the strap with both hands, I like to make a big circle so that my arms become a weight to pull the leg um, toward me. And again, here, the left leg can be bent, foot on the floor, or the leg can be straight. You can see which one feels better on your low back and which one gives you the desired stretch. So play between the two and you'll be able to find your spot. Relaxing the shoulders, the jaw, waggle the jaw a little bit, leave space inside the mouth. If you put the strap toward the ball of the foot and pull down, you'll get a deeper stretch along the back of the leg, the calf and the Achilles. So my arms are just like weights drawing the leg toward my head. You can keep a little bend in the knee rather than lock it straight out. So keep a little bend in the right knee and then play with what feels best with the left. So right now we're opening up tissue on the back of the right leg. Opening the hips means you have to open all the tissue, all the muscles around the leg that hold the leg to your torso keep your leg attached. All of that is your hips. And now turn your right heel inward, your toes outward, and take your right leg out to the right. I'm keeping my elbow on the ground to, to determine how far 
to take the leg. Take your left knee in towards your chest, hold it with your left hand, take it out to the left. So you're getting a balance on your low back to avoid tweaking the SI joints or the two joints on the back of your pelvis. You could take your left hand inside the leg, holding like happy baby. So the right leg, the heels toward the ceiling, the toes are toward the floor. External rotation from the thigh bone itself in, in the pelvis. And you're bringing your right leg up toward the right shoulder, any amount. So we're holding each of these about a minute. And now take your left foot to the floor, bring your right leg up toward the ceiling, stretch the left leg out on the floor and switch hands with the strap, taking the straps into your left hand. And here again, I like to wrap it around my wrist, starting to take the left leg, the right leg across toward the left. Turn your head to the right to get a little rotation in the neck and just take the foot about one inch across. Look up at the foot and square the foot. So draw the little toe side of the foot back towards you. So you feel the ankle is square and you're drawing the foot up towards your left shoulder. By moving this like one inch at a time across the body, you'll notice that the area of the stretch changes. It's all still pretty intense. So make sure that you have space inside your mouth and that you are not clenching your jaw, using your facial muscles, scrunching up your shoulders towards your ears. And then bend the knee, bring it in, release the strap and just let both legs go long just, just for a moment here to notice the difference in the two sides. Uh, the right side feels like fresh blood is rushing into it, and the right leg feels longer. All right, let's go ahead and do the same thing on the left, starting with half happy baby. So maybe holding on behind the knee, holding on the ankle with your elbow inside the knee, holding on to the outside of the foot, and explore what it feels like to have the right leg bent or the leg long on the floor. And again, noticing if there's any discomfort in the hip socket, you want to avoid that, backing out of this pose any amount so that you feel pain-free in the hip. And now go ahead and strap up the left foot. And again, drawing the, the strap down, holding it with both hands, making a circle around your hand, around your wrist, so that your arms pull just like weights and it becomes a little effortless on the shoulders to pull against the leg. Right knee can be bent foot on the floor. That takes a little bit of it out of the low back. The left knee should be a little bit bent and bring the strap up toward the ball of the foot so that when you pull down, you're getting a little more stretch in the back calf and the Achilles. So play around with the right leg being long on the floor, see what that does. Knee bent, foot on the floor. See how it feels in general on the stretch and as, as well as how it feels in the low back. And then check in with the jaw and the face and the shoulders. <clears throat> and now turn your left heel in toward midline, taking the straps in your left hand, taking the leg out to the left, draw the right knee in and hold the right knee with your right hand. You can take the right knee out to the right as you take the left leg out to the left and up toward the left shoulder. The left heel's turning toward the ceiling, making this adjustment from the hip socket way up high, not really just the ankle and the lower leg. 
Your right hand can be holding the ankle of your right leg. You can hold behind the knee, anything you like. Taking your right knee out to the right, your left leg out to the left, balancing evenly on the left and right part of your low back of your sacrum. And now release the right leg, foot on the floor. Take your left leg up to the center. Let your right leg go long all the way on the floor. You're gonna switch hands with the strap. And again, I like to roll it around my hand, my wrist. And taking the, the left leg now up and a little bit across, just maybe an inch or so, so that you feel how this stretch is. It's a very dramatic and intense. So back off as needed. You know you're in too deep when you're clenching your jaw and holding your breath. So relax the jaw, the neck, and the face. Look away from the legs so that you get a little rotation in the neck. And slowly, a little bit at a time, taking the leg further and further across. about 20 more seconds here. Bring it to a place that is enjoyable. Where might that be? And bend the knee coming back up. Release the strap. Notice both sides Hopefully they're all evened out. <clears throat> Bend your knees, feet on the floor. We'll go to shape four. But first, press the tops of your thighs away. Make space. And then cross right ankle over left knee. You can stay here. You can draw the left knee in. You can put a strap behind the left leg and threading in between the triangle. Or you can use your hands, holding the back of the left leg with both hands. Flex the right foot, and you can take this deeper if you like. You can scoop both hands underneath the right leg, holding the ankle and the calf, and let the left leg go completely, lifting it up and lowering it all the way down. So this is a variation on the pose. It's dynamic movement, and it takes you deeper into the pose. Sure your shoulders are soft and easy and the jaw is not clenched. And release, we'll switch sides. <clears throat> Again, put your feet down and make some space at the top of the hips, pressing away thighs from pelvis and then cross the left ankle over. Stay put or thread the needle, maybe with a strap or maybe your hands. So you'll notice a change between left and right. There's a dramatic difference between sides, which I'm mentioning because I am feeling it. On my left is much tighter than my right. And then the variation, if you like, holding on underneath the leg with both hands. You can hold the foot, you can hold the calf, Letting the right leg, in this case, go completely to lower and lift. And as you lower and lift, try to relax the shoulders and soften the face. Make space inside the mouth. release. Um, I failed to mention that you need two blocks for this next part. So I'm going to run and get two blocks. If you haven't got your two blocks, you run and get them too. Because we're going to put one under our low back.
All right. Leave one at the foot of the, your mat and the other one lay back and knees bent, feet on the floor. Lift your hips up and put the block at its lowest height underneath your low back. So it's not under the, sorry, underneath your pelvis. It's not under the curve of your low back. So make sure it's not up high that your pelvis is tipping forward off the block. Make sure your pelvis is firmly placed flat on the block. Uh, um, you can lift up, tuck the pelvis under, and then go down. Now, this is going to be a stretch for the front of the thigh, for the one quadricep passes over the hip, and also so does the psoas. So right foot is on the floor, knee bent. Push the block so that it's under your left heel. So if you're not feeling a stretch here at all, in this part of the leg, the front, then you don't need the block. If you're feeling a stretch and it's already intense, use the block. I'm not feeling it, so I'm going to move the block. And if you're not feeling anything here, you could go up one notch on the block, lifting it up here. Now, for me, that's too much, so I'm going to go back to the lower level on the block. So left leg is out. Take your right. If if you're fine here and you've got enough, then that's it. Stay put. If you want more, take the right knee into the chest and take the knee out to the right. And again, here, you can hold on to the knee, you can hold on to the ankle, whatever feels most comfortable for you. So that's taking this pose deeper. If you'd like to go deeper yet, you can take your left arm, same leg arm extension, over your head. So that's getting into a lot of tissue that goes from the top of the hip all the way inside uh, the psoas attaches to the vertebra on the inside of your torso. If this hurts your low back at all, you come out, lift the hips up, tuck them under, and go back down. If it still hurts your low back, then this pose is not for you. We're holding this again for just about a minute. <clears throat> and put the right foot on the floor. Take your arms down by your sides. Put your left foot on the floor and notice. I would set the block up in case you need it for the second side, in which case come off the block. Set the block up to the right so it'll be ready for your right heel. Go onto your backs, then lift the hips and return the block under your pelvis. And again, lift up, tuck the pelvis under, that means lift the tailbone to the ceiling and place the pelvis back down. This time, taking your right leg out, rest it on the block and see if you need it. If you're getting a deep stretch in your right here, then that's your spot. If you're not getting a stretch, kick the block out of the way. If you'd like to go deeper in this stretch, you can take your left knee in towards your chest, hold the knee, draw the knee out to the left. You could hold the ankle and rest your elbow inside the knee if you like. And if you want to go deeper yet, your right arm goes up and over your head. So you should be feeling a stretch along the front of the hip crease, maybe all the way, way inside, deep inside, near the front part of your spine. So one of the quadricep muscles crosses over the hip and the other muscle that crosses over is the psoas. Those two muscles help you lift your leg when you're standing lifted up or flexing the leg when you're laying down. Coming out, release your left leg, foot on the floor, right knee bends, foot on the floor, lift your hips up, take the block out from under, and take a reclining child's pose again. Knees toward respective shoulders, maybe a little movement around. And then roll to one side, lift yourself up, and that's it. Happy hips.
Hip hip hooray. Thanks for practicing. Namaste.